it's, it's sort of ironic. My very first audition was for the Met, and James Levine was the director then. And I was, it was my, probably my first month at school. I was 18. Um, and when you're, it's great when you're 18 because you don't know your limits. You just think you can do anything. So back in those days, uh, anybody who applied got into that audition. It wasn't like nowadays, there's a lot of tapes. Um, but the Met was, if you want to come and play, we're going to let you. So I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and play. And I decided that you know, I was going to win, too. I was good enough. And I think that's what the confidence thing did. Of course, I didn't win. Um, I was not nearly ready. Um, but every, every audition that I took was a learning lesson. And I, I strongly recommend anybody um, who wants to do this field, start doing your auditioning early, because what can you lose? Um, you know, things happen at, at auditions that you just won't expect, and you have to go through that yourself, and you have to find ways to conquer things yourself, and no one can really teach you how to do that. Um, and the only way to do it is to take auditions. So I took that, and uh, I took a, maybe one or two more, and then by my third or fourth one, I think is, that's when I got the Hong Kong audition, because uh, that was a year later. Winning that one was a, well, it was slightly a surprise, because one, they came to New York, and I didn't even know that the music director was the guy auditioning me. There was a guy with a tape recorder, and it was at Carroll Music Studios in New York City. And I played through a whole bunch of stuff, and I didn't get any impression of anything. They just said, next, 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 and I went home. And two weeks later, I found out, because they went and listened to all their tapes, and I guess the committee of the orchestra listened at that point. And I got, I got a, a, a wire, a certified letter, saying that congratulations you've won this job and um and i was ecstatic and my, my parents weren't so ecstatic though <laughs> so they actually called tony Cerrone and said how can we talk him out of this and uh, there was no way that that was going to happen so tony was actually very supportive and um said listen he should get his feet wet you know it's he's he's ready and um so I did, and it was a great experience. Uh, I, I got nothing but positives out of that job because I ended up playing a lot of timpani and a lot of snare drum, uh, which are my um, bread and butter. So um, it was a great experience. And you know, I was young, so I learned a thing or two. Fortunately, I got to study with Buster Bailey, um, which was a completely different style of teaching. Buster was incredible because Buster would just make things up on the spot. We'd work on one lick and we'd spend an hour on it and he'd, he'd have enough material where you know, you'd be adding flams and you'd reverse the sticking and then you know, you'd add dynamics and it, you know, it, was, it was a very weird way to, to study because you didn't really feel like you were playing any sort of pieces. You were, you were just getting your hands to do what you wanted them to. You know, he'd say, what, what's your problem? What, what, what doesn't work in your playing? And I'd tell him and then he'd make up exercises. And I studied a little bit with Chris Lamb while I was in uh, New York, and, and again, he's very different. And uh, if I had to um, impart anything on, on younger players, it's study with a lot of different guys. Don't study with one, don't pick one. Try to get as much as you can out of the area that you're in. So you know, studying in the big cities is um, is good because you know you could take advantage of a lot of great players. I was in New York, so there's tons tons of people I could study with. You know, of, of course, you're not going to win every audition, um, and I, I, I took, uh, I can't remember how many I took, but, you know, there was a few others that I, that I didn't do well on, but one that I remember specifically is uh, Toronto Symphony had a principal percussion job, and it was in uh, 1992. I've never played worse. I played maybe three excerpts, and... Um, there was no chance I was advancing, so I didn't get anywhere. And the next day, I had an audition for the Boston Symphony, and I won that job. Sometimes it's good to fall on your face, because it'll help you gain momentum, maybe, for, you know, or it'll help you, it helped me um, grit my teeth and prove to myself that I could do it. So, oh man, I totally bombed. I think they were laughing. I actually heard laughter, I think. <laughs> Which didn't help, because they made me keep going. They made me play Porgy after that, and I was just shaking. My left hand was all over the place. Oh, it was awful. It was the longest three minutes of my life. I, I knew that it was nerves, and um, I, I knew that I could play this stuff. I think it's just in the type of person you are. If, if you're a confident person, that will take you a long way. 
if you know you want to be in this business, you know, there's really nothing that's going to stand in your way. Uh, I mean, for me, there was no option. I had no option other than playing in an orchestra because that's the only thing I could see myself doing. It wasn't really much pressure. It was just uh, determination. You know, I wanted it badly, so I was going to do whatever it took. As far as learning how to conquer any sort of um, nerves that come up, and if they do come up, snare drum is going to be the telling tale where you hear them. Um, I uh, figured out a way through breathing and through muscle management of what muscles I'm using um, to be able to get through and play pretty solidly, even if I'm nervous. A, s a certain type of, you know, sort of yoga mentality where, you know, you can slow your breathing down, slow your heart rate down. I actually practiced, you know, getting a state of mind where um, I was as relaxed as I could be. And I did that before, and I did that for almost every audition uh, near the end, um, where I would just be in my practice room, I'm the next guy on, I'm not warming up, um, I'm breathing, um, I'm getting my head together. And then when you're actually playing, you know, for snare drum, almost all the time I use my bigger muscles. I don't do a lot of this, I, you know, this follows the big muscles. So all my control is the stick is an extension of my arm. And those big muscles, it's hard for them to shake. It's easy for the little ones to shake. So um, after a while, I just, it became second nature. Um, there was enough of that five hour snare drumming where I sort of clued into that. It's like these big muscles are really helping me. Um, so you can play much softer, you can slow the, the speed of the stick down. Uh, there's all kinds of benefits to it. You can take it too far and use too much arm, but you know, it's really a matter of throwing a ball. Let the wrist follow the arm. And that's sort of my basis for all instruments with percussion. So it helps me with, the, with those nerves.